My name is Tyler Falcoa, and I am diagnosed with OCD and panic disorder. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder, and basically it's exactly what it states. You obsess over things and you act out these compulsions that uh, kind of like rituals or things that um, you feel like you have to do as somebody with OCD or else something bad will happen. I was 10 years old, I was playing football and somebody had tackled me with a sharp chin strap clip and severed my bicep. Following that, I became very, just very scared. I was, I was scared to, to leave the house. I was scared to be without my family. I was scared that something bad was going to happen to me. And that's when I started having intrusive thoughts, like something bad's gonna happen if I leave the house, if I'm away from my family. Something bad is going to happen if I eat this food and it happens to have germs on it. I'm gonna get sick, I'm gonna end up in the hospital again. I'll have to wash my hands tons of times because I feel like no matter where I go or no matter what I touch or who I come in contact with, somebody has a disease or there is some illness on the countertop that I need to wash my hands. And some I've gone, you know, washing my hands five times within half a minute. I was I was in fourth or fifth grade and my mom was like, all right, time to go to bed. And I had been watching a football game. And um and she told me to go to bed and it was like 7:30, 8 o'clock, and I was like I was so angry and I said, I hate my room. I hate this bed, I hate my room, I hate this house. And the next day, my house burns down. And so I had this superstition in my head and I, I said, oh my God, I caused the house fire. Um, even though it was because of a gas leak, um, I still felt like I caused it. And so I always thought if I say something out of line or I, if I don't do something um, to kind of satisfy my thoughts and my compulsions, something bad is going to happen. Um, that's, that's where a lot of my OCD came from, was, was because of that incident. And I was, I was convinced that it was because of me. So for me, OCD is present in everything that I do. Of course, I gotta take medication every day because without that, I can't control my, my thoughts. I, I have a hard time letting go of thoughts. Sometimes I'll go three to four weeks uh, thinking and obsessing over the same things. It's hard for me to let go of, of thoughts and it's hard for me to live my life. It's hard for me to be present in the moment with family and friends when I'm obsessing over something because nothing else in the world matters to me besides that one thing that is really freaking me out. It takes me three or four times longer to leave the house because I'm too busy touching knobs and locking doors and rechecking to see if I turned off certain things in the house, rechecking to see if I unplugged certain things. A lot of people don't talk about OCD with, when it comes to intrusive thoughts. They, a lot of people talk about, you know, having to be neat and, and having to, uh, you know, rearrange furniture, which is a part of OCD. But intrusive thoughts, intrusive thinking is a big part of OCD that a lot of people don't talk about. It's like you're chained to the thought and no matter what you do, you can't stop thinking about it when you're at work. You can't stop thinking about it when you're... I've had dreams of thoughts that I've had that I've obsessed over. If you really, really get attached to it, you know, you can have panic attacks, you can, um, you know, you start to do things to make sure that nothing bad happens. It'll keep coming into your head. And then you'll start, you know, if I don't touch the doorknob five times, then I'm gonna hurt somebody or somebody's gonna hurt me. And then that's when you start acting out things to kind of avoid, you know, your thought becoming a reality, but it, it, it doesn't become a reality. The biggest thing that 
helps me when I'm going through, uh, I like to call them like a spell, uh, is, is talking it out. Definitely having people to talk to, my support system, um, they'll listen to me, they'll sit on the phone with me for hours, they'll sit down with me. I like to go for walks, I like to hang out with my friends and, and my family, that, that helps me. And sometimes when I, when I have a really bad week of just bad OCD, the best thing that I, that I can tell myself is you've been through worse. That's the best advice, you know, that I would give somebody to who struggles with OCD is, is talk about it. Talk about it with somebody, you know, because we're all suffering from something and chances are they're suffering from something too. And I think that's, I think that's exactly what the world needs right now. Because everybody thinks that the other person's fine. Everybody thinks that the other person is not dealing with anything, but everybody's dealing with something. Knowing other people have been through what I've been through is, the, is a lifesaver. Because the last thing anybody wants to feel when they're terrified is that they're alone. Um, that's my biggest fear is that I'm alone. I'm very lucky to have a support system that is very patient with me and they've been kind of really on the sidelines trying to help me out with this for well over 15 years. Knowing that I am not alone and, and knowing that it does pass. I mean, there was a point this past summer where I had OCD really bad and I felt like I was never going to get over this. And I, I remember I remember saying to my to my girlfriend, I was like, I hope that I'm better by next summer. I, I physically remember saying that. And it's, um, it's October 20th. And um, I'd say I'm doing, doing pretty well. You know, and right now I have the urge to knock on wood, but <laughs> I, uh, you know, that's something that, that's, it's just an automatic thought that comes to your brain. Like you feel like you're like, oh God, like if I don't knock on wood, I'm gonna relapse. You kind of have to play that game with yourself where you're kind of like, you know what, and if I do go down that road again, then I'll deal with it again, just like I did the first time, and I'll get through it again. Um, just a lot of mental games, a lot of just coaching yourself. So that's kind of, that's kind of my, <laughs> how I deal with, with OCD. I will say one thing positive about my OCD. I have a very clean house. My clothes are very clean. Um, my music sounds, I would say my music sounds very tight. I think my music sounds um, like an OCD person made it. 